Hey everybody, welcome to Open for Business. Man, oh man, I've got a great, great guest today. Oh my goodness, I got Bar Barbara Doringer. And you are from Whippet Properties of Florida. And yep. you're not, you you got some experience in this world, don't you? I do, in several different careers. Oh, let's see, I didn't know that. Yeah, you didn't know that. You, I, you haven't just been the most wonderful realtor your whole life? You didn't grow up going, I'm going to be a realtor. Six no. years old, I'm going to be the greatest realtor ever. No, unfortunately not. <laughs> I actually started out my career in Pennsylvania, and I was in the banking industry for 17 years oh. and worked my way up to assistant vice president when I left the state and came to Florida. Wow. So you were an assistant VP of a bank. Mm -hmm. You big time. Small town bank, but that That's doesn't okay. matter. <laughs> bank is a bank. I'm That's just saying, right. you know, the regulations. Let me tell you, I don't care if you're small or big, the regulations are still They're the same. They're all the same. That's right. Exactly. You got to stay in that world. That's so let's right. talk about Whippet Properties. Okay. What? Okay. So what is, do you have a niche or are you kind of just like a good general solid realtor? I started out in the vacation home market because in the early 2000s, yeah. not 200s. I was like, uh oh. <laughs> the early 2000s, um, the market was such that a lot of British were coming over to okay. Florida and buying vacation homes because the dollar exchange was in their favor. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I met a lot of people from England and they bought a lot of homes from me there and they used them as vacation homes. And then I actually went to a senior community where my husband and I worked for a builder and then actually built our vacation home, or not our vacation home, our residential home there in a senior com community. So my niche stayed with working with seniors, okay. and I've been working with seniors for over 20 years. Wow. Now, when you say working with seniors, do you, are you going in and going, okay, well, it's time for you to move into some smaller accommodations. Let me sell your house and sell your stuff for you. Well, you know, I do a lot of, well, I do some of the probate uh, right. real estates and that <laughs> kind of ties into that. The word end probate of it. just makes everybody I know, cringe. I know. And if you have a will, you don't have to go through that. Right, right. But anyway, no, what we did was we worked in 55 plus communities. So a lot of people from the North want to come down and have a second home. Yes. Uh, or they may want to just retire from wherever they are and move to a 55 plus community community because there's a lot of amenities. There's a way of making new friends, you know, have a lot of activities. So that's pretty much what we work with is the 55 plus segment. Okay. And uh, the, the communities, you know, where they're not necessarily looking to move into assisted living or anything right. like that, but they would like to be in a retirement community. So have you ever, okay, this is going to sound kind of weird. Have you ever helped them move down here, retire, and then they call you up and say, hey, we're not going to, I mean, I'm, when I say ALF, I'm not talking about where they're being pushed around in wheelchairs, but right, I mean, they go right. into one of these community housings mm -hmm. and then they call you and say, Barbara, I, I, we, we're, we're going to go into here. We need the house sold and all that kind of stuff. Is that something else that you help with? Yes, it is. And a lot of times they have lived in a senior community for several years and things change, you right. know, four or five years down the road, situations change, their lives change. Now they want to go back up North and be with family. Right. So now they need to sell again. Right. Because they are going to uh, move where they're closer to somebody that can help them out as they age. Okay. Because mm -hmm. that, that's, that seems like it would be kind of a harder, that's a harder realm in, in my brain. My brain mm -hmm. says that's a hard realm to get into because what do you do? I mean, you know, or... You know, they yeah. move down as a couple and one passes away and they're like, eh, that has happened. Yeah. That has happened more times than not. And sometimes when that does happen and uh, the spouse loses a husband or wife, they all of a sudden don't know how to clean out the house, you know, what to get rid of, what to keep. They don't know who to call. They don't know who can help them. They don't have the vendors or services uh, that are at, at their fingertips. So right. they rely on someone who's in the senior spouse specialty to give them that information or to help them clear out the house or do anything that needs done mm. to get them moved where they need to go. And I have a big long list of services that we have used. Um, I have the SRES designation. Okay. So I have brochures that I give them. I also have um, a lot of different booklets, you know, that tell you how you could age in place, that tell you, you know, what to do and what's the first thing to talk to your children about right. if you're getting to that point. Um, uh, just a lot of different avenues to a senior market. And I'm finding that uh, many realtors don't get into that 
particular niche because well for, number one i am a senior mm -hmm. so you know you've got the credit, no you're not you've got the yeah, I say 45 yeah. At the most, well yeah it's super platinum two or three times over going on there. Yeah. i like it <laughs> so um you know they they can identify you know the credibility is mm -hmm. there because i lived and worked in the senior community i am a senior and i know the different steps also what a lot of people don't know is i was a widow at one point oh. too so I did lose a husband before I remarried. And, uh, you know, I wasn't a widow very long because uh, the one I'm married to now, he made me marry him, you know, like. Smart man. Yeah, real, real I mean, quick. So, yeah, heck yeah. So I, I can see I didn't, why you uh, did that over there, buddy. I, I didn't see that. stay I see single that. long. Uh, yeah. But anyway, um, you know, I know what I had to go through. You know, all of a sudden I lost my health insurance. Right. You know, I, I lost different things that I relied on. And, uh, you know, having been through that myself, I can help a lot of people that are you know going through the same thing that so do you do you find this the tampa bay area is the hotter of the mar markets for people coming down to retire and find a, a, a their their second forever home kind of <laughs> the tampa area has gotten really hot okay. in the last few years yes and uh it's growing in leaps and bounds and i know land of lakes and lutes in particular there are Community is going up left and right, and right. Uh, you know Del Webb Bexley is mm -hmm. is nearby, and there's a lot of other communities that are starting to crop up, and um, I see all the time the different builders, you know, yeah. that are marketing and promoting that okay we're we're going to have a retirement community well they don't call them retirement communities they mm -hmm. call them 55 plus yeah because you know people in their 50s they're still very young they're very active mm -hmm. a lot of them are still working i mean i'm still working so um you know we we don't go with the senior right. designation like right, we right. do just 55 plus so so do you okay so because we all know the name i'm getting ready to say so do you do you uh find homes in the villages type of areas uh, I usually do not go oh, up there because I know they're. Ex I mean, they're expanding like <laughs> they. I mean, it's a huge. Well, expansion. it's a city within itself. Yeah, and there's. Well, you talk about having a realtor here and there and everywhere. I mean, oh, there's yeah. there's tons of them up in that area, and right. it, and it's a good hour or more, probably close to two hours. Yeah, north of here, and there's enough business and communities yeah. down our way so that, so is this so mm -hmm. what what areas do you what, what parts of the tampa bay area do you do you uh, handle um pinellas pasco hillsborough counties those are the three counties i try and stay within although okay. i will go to hernando or you know wherever is uh some place that i have a client that really right. wants to be in now being that i spent over 20 years in polk county which was Davenport area near Disney World. Mm -hmm. I know that area very, very well. And I have uh, several realtors on my team. So I've got a realtor over there that's between Davenport and Claremont. So when I have any business over that way now, I refer it to her. Okay. And so, you know, that helps me so I don't have to travel back and forth. I didn't think that the, I didn't think that was a, I know it used to be, I didn't think that was much of a 55 plus area that well there are several because if you go well davenport has the ridgewood lakes area which they have two senior communities they have high vista and they have uh, del webb orlando okay in that community it's a golf course community when you go a little bit south you've got <clears throat> excuse me you've got winter haven yes and winter haven has oh my gosh they're starting to get i don't know dozens of 55 plus communities down that oh, way okay All then right. if you want to go a little bit north claremont has quite a few 55 plus communities. So right. Orlando itself, you know, being right in the city, mm -hmm. they don't, they're more geared to, you know, the younger segment of the population. But um, if you get right outside the Orlando areas, you'll find quite okay. a few. So I'm going to ask you the question I ask every realtor that I know, what makes you better I will say the word better okay. than the other realtors around you. Cause right now, if I threw a rock, I could hit 20, 30, maybe a hundred realtors right in the head. And yes, you could. It, it, it's, it's everybody. The one thing I, every time I hear this, I cringe and I'm like, well, someone's career is not going, I'm just going to become a realtor. No, I don't think so. I know. So what makes you better or different? Well, 
For one thing, I have my own small company, which mm-hmm. I want to keep small. My goal is to just be no larger than seven. Oh, I wow, think that's okay. the perfect team. Um, what I do is, uh, well, I've been with franchises. Let me back up a little bit. Okay. I've been with uh, the larger franchises. What you do there, you do get good training, mm-hmm. uh, but I went and got my certification in training and development, so I can train realtors myself. Oh, okay. And uh, in addition to that, they pay, a lot of them, they pay... Um, uh, desk duty, you know, floor time. Yeah. They pay the franchise fee. Right. They have to pay for some marketing and advertising that right. the company does for them. They have to sometimes pay for their own errors and omissions insurance. Uh, there's a big long list of things that they have to pay for. With me uh, being with a small company, you don't have any of that. Oh, and I offer okay. a higher commission rate than some of the franchises do because right. Uh, for instance, we went with a franchise, my husband and I, and uh, we had uh, over 15 years of experience in real estate. And they put us down to the beginning oh. commission rate. Oh, Yeah. And then you have to sell a certain percentage or a certain dollar volume, like so many millions, right. to work your way up to a higher commission rate. Mm. Then you go back to square one on the anniversary date of when they hired you. So it's like, you know, it, it's just a constant. That's not cool. No, it's a constant giving your money away. Right. So with me, and I also um, talk about customer service because... And this has happened to me many times too. When you go to a bigger company, you're you're going through a menu, you yeah. know, just like all the other big right. companies. And uh, if you have a real problem, sometimes it's hard to get the right person or get a person, mm. especially on weekends, evenings. You know, problems happen at night. You know, Saturdays, Sundays, holidays, and uh, I'm reachable, you know, twenty four seven. And the bigger companies are not. Right. They, um, you know, I co-list with all of my agents. So I'm. Uh, my goal is to be a non-competing broker right. where I can just give them all the leads that I get. Right. But right now I'm not big enough to do that. Yeah. So if I get some business, I actually co-list with whoever is in that particular area out of my five agents wow. so that they always get a piece of, of anything that we get, even what I get myself. So. I never realized there were, I mean, again, I, I, I'm married to a wonderful lady that's been in the, the mortgage <clears throat> real estate world for 20, like 45 years, and I've married her in 27. I didn't realize there was that much ease. There's a lot. To be a part of a bigger broker. There is a lot. In fact, I'm trying to recruit, well, I am going to be recruiting another uh, realtor in March okay. that's coming to me from a big franchise company wow. because I can save her $75 a month that she pays just to be with them. Uh, I'm saving her the 6% franchise fee. She's paying $320 a year for the errors and omissions insurance, which I pay for my company. She's getting a lower commission rate than what I can give her starting out. And uh, even though she's had some training, I'm finding that uh, in looking at a listing that she did, and she's been with them for two years, there were errors on that listing agreement, and she does not even know how to input a listing into the multiple listing service because they have a transaction coordinator who does it for them. Oh, my. Well, that's that's okay, and that's great, but yeah. now she doesn't know how to do it. Right, so you have the trainer. Yeah, yeah. so, you know, there's disadvantages, you know, right. quite a few for being with a big company. It looks great. But you need to know exactly what's going on on those listing agreements and on those contracts, and you need to understand how to do it from from beginning to end. So, so that because that right there, if 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 it's not done right, you're the one paying for the omissions and errors. Right. Going, oh well, I didn't put that in there, but yet I'm gonna I'm gonna get the hit for that. That's that's yeah, horrible. Yeah, yeah. It, I and the other thing I found was that the cancellation fees. <clears throat> Um, I usually only charge no more than $500 in a cancellation fee. And that's if a customer, you know, wants to cancel and go with someone else. Mm-hmm. If they want to cancel for other reasons like illness or, you know, there's a situation that developed in their family, something that they just were not in control of, I will waive the cancellation fee. Wow, okay? that's pretty good. The bigger companies... They're not going to do that. that. Not only that, but I discovered that this bigger company was charging 1% of the listing price to cancel. And when you've got a $500,000 home listed, someone's making money. $5,000 cancellation. That's money. Oh, my. Yeah. You know, I was amazed. Something goes wrong, they can't. They may, that what went wrong 
could have been something that affected their bank, a bank account. And then next thing you know, it's right. like, and now I got to come up with five grand. Exactly. Oh, geez. So there's just, you know, um, I always kid around and tell people, you know, um, size doesn't matter unless you're with, uh, you know, people that we talk about in advertising. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to me, uh, my husband and I worked for several franchises. Then we went to work for a very small company that was a husband and wife broker team. They were both from England. Uh, very, very nice people. But uh, Alan and I were the only two realtors they ever had. They just had us and the two of them. And we did better with them than we ever did with any other company really? over in Davenport. Well, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because all oh, the crap's gone. Exactly. You know, the junk fees is what, you know, right. normally what people go. So, right. I, so this, I always ask this question to every person that sits in that chair that you're sitting in. What is your why? Why did you go, you know, I'm going to get out of banking and I'm going to become a realtor? You know, when I was leaving Pennsylvania... Um, I decided I did not want to get another job in banking because the banking industry had done a total shift in the way they were operating. They were now going totally into sales. Mm. So what I had done for so many years, you know, with personal uh, interaction with customers mm -hmm. and, you know, doing what I love doing to help people, that was now going away. And you had to focus on selling additional products cross-selling is what mm -hmm. they called it so you had to sell more products you had to meet certain quotas and your your um raises uh they were put you know on what quotas you did meet and if you didn't meet those quotas and they were monthly then you you didn't get a raise at the end of the year <gasps> and uh, oh. it it got to be where it was just not fun anymore right. and unfortunately that was happening na nationwide right. so to come down to florida i thought i'll do anything but banking <laughs> anything okay and and i got into real estate uh, kind of by fluke because um my son at the time was work he's still working for disney actually but he came down and, and got a job with disney and he was renting so we were trying to find him something he could afford right to buy and get out of renting and we came across this manufactured home community that was on leased land that was nearby and it was something he could afford so the salesperson that worked with him she was getting ready to leave and we stayed in touch when I was still in Pennsylvania. And she said, Barbara, you'd be really good at this. It, you know, I'll put in a good word for you. And, you know, maybe you could just take over and, you know, sell these manufactured homes. She said, you'd, you'd be able to do it. So um, long story short, I kind of got hired over the phone, came down to Florida and took that position. And uh, I sold manufactured homes and didn't nice. have a real estate license because it was on leased land. As I'll say, yeah, so because, you, you yeah, didn't need a license. Leased land thing. Right, right. right. So, um, you know, I worked there for three years. That's actually where I met my current husband, by the oh, way, see. you know, because uh, he was working there at the time, too. But, um, yeah, so we did that until they sold out. Then the uh, owner of the community paid to have all of us get our real estate licenses because we had a, an awesome sales team and he wanted to keep it together. Right. So we all got our licenses, and uh, he actually um, developed his own little real estate company. <clears throat> but for many, many different reasons, it, it just didn't work. Right. So then we all went off into general real estate, gotcha. and uh, so that's that's how it started. Wow, that's good. I mean, it, that, and yeah. that's a good why. It is a good why. It you was, were helping and family I, out. And I loved what I was doing right. because it was affordable housing for people, you know, that couldn't afford the the actual, you know, homes that were about hundred or 200,000 right. more in price. Yep. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed so, it. And, and we used to show homes on golf carts. That oh, was fun. that's even better. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Um, so my, my question to you is, um, most people think that once you're a real estate agent, you're, that you've got your license and away you go, right? Wrong. Let, let tell everybody at home what I mean. There's a lot of education, continuing education, continuing education, do, even right? now after 25 years. Right. Every two years, you have to do your continuing education to keep your license active. And of course, there's a fee for that. Right. You know, there's always a fee for everything. Now, when you teach, is that considered education credits? No. You have to go. So you have to go to a certified person. Yeah. Like Bob or you have to go through a like certain class and okay. be certified to right. do that kind of like the SRES and say, other that things. SRES is that's mm -hmm. on top of your already license, correct? Right. 
Right. That's an addition because there's all kinds of designations that you can get in real estate and all kinds of certifications. Gotcha. They're two different things, but you know, you can just go on. It's not that you have a license, another license, but you have uh, something in addition to offer in a certain niche. Okay. Okay. That's why well, that is yeah. absolutely phenomenal. It can go on and on and on. I mean, there's so many things you can get. There's, there's education uh, to target, uh, divorced couples, you know, to help them through real estate. There's uh, designations, you know, you can be an ABR, an accredited buyer uh, representative. There's there's just so many. There's just a big long list. Okay. So I have to ask you, where did the name Whippet come from? Whippet? I love dogs. And, okay. you know, my grandkids never could really pronounce Barbara when they were little. So I, be, <laughs> I became Grandma B. Okay? Uh, okay. So then they couldn't pronounce Doringer either. That's right. why I'm Grandma B. So I thought, well, I don't want to have a real estate company with my name in it yeah. because nobody remembers names. I mean, you know, it's, it's just a given that it's hard to remember somebody's right. name. So I wanted something catchy, something that I could use uh, with uh, clever marketing and advertising. Right. And I was sitting in a living room. Room with my friend who had two Whippet dogs. Now, what are Whippet dogs? Whippet dogs are a smaller breed of the Greyhound family. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, if you want to look here, they they kind of. Yeah, look we got like them up Greyhounds. on the screen already. Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah, they are um, of the Greyhound family. So she has two Whippet dogs. Well, I have a Yorkie Poo, and Yorkie Poo Realty was not going to work. Yorkie Poo. Okay. Hi, right, so. thanks for calling Yorkie Poo. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. We didn't. It'd be that. kind of fun to say. <laughs> it would have. It would have. But I don't think anybody would have taken me seriously. Right. So I said, "Well, we were we were brainstorming, my husband and friend, and her husband and I, and and all of a sudden, you know, Ellen bursts out. What about whip it? And I thought, you know, I like that. I like that because yep. you know our tagline is "We whip it good," right. and uh, Devo, you know, whip it yep. is our is our theme song, and we've been able to do a lot of fun advertising. Are you sure, you're not selling up in the villages. No, <laughs> okay. but I just, do have a little saying. whip that I carry in my purse when I do my uh, ten minute uh, do presentation. You really? I do. That's yeah, awesome. I do. That's awesome. Yeah. And for those people that that might turn off a little bit, I do have a whisk too that I say do we you? whip it good. Yeah, uh, so I can go either way with that. You could do kitchen. Yeah, you know, right, yeah, right, no, right. That's... But yeah, it's worked out pretty well because you know what? Everywhere I go after I've done a talk or whatever, they don't remember my name. But if I go into it, they'll say, "Oh, you're Whip It." Yeah, so, right. so it works. It works. So, okay, so how do people? So if I'm watching this right now, how do I get a hold of you? That's the best way. I know there's tons of ways, but that's the best way. Best way is texting me. Okay, you know because I uh, I do check. I have my phone with me all the time, except right now. Yep. <laughs> and I do check set. my texts constantly, even if I'm in a meeting, you know, I'll, I'll glance at it real quick. If okay. there's an emergency or somebody I have to get back to right away. Um, but like I said, um, being a small company, what I love about this most is that I don't go to bed at night until I answer my text or answer the message that was left for me or answer my email that was sent to me. Okay. You're going to get uh, attention, you know, the very same day that you need help or that you ask a question. That's awesome. And you don't see that with very many businesses today. Nope, you do not. Mm -hmm. um, I, the, the one yeah. biggest complaint, well... I called. You can't get anybody. I couldn't get anybody. Right. Or I got an AI voice, right, that just knows right. how to answer you if it's scripted correctly. Right. Um, or you get some guy in Bangladesh. I mean, yeah, exactly. I can't believe they speak would do English. that. But, mm. You know, the other thing I wanted to mention was, um, you know, talking about uh, – getting in touch with people and things. And I think I just lost my train of thought, but it, it'll come back. No, that's not a worry. Not yeah. a worry. So, okay. So I, I've been going, we, we've been showing your website and man, your website is completely full of great information. Absolutely great information. I just redid the website last year. So it's not even a year old. Um, I hired a website designer in Orlando who strictly does um well, he, he does a few others, but he really concentrates on real estate, real estate. websites yep. because he uh, was in real estate too. So he did a phenomenal job for me, and uh, there's a lot of things I can do with it. I write a blog every week on my website, yep. and I try to do either real estate related or lifestyle or something that would be beneficial to turn someone. Turn into a podcast. 
I should. I know yes. a guy. I know a guy that could. I help should you out do with. that. <laughs> I also do a um, a weekly um, sixty seconds for seniors video. Okay. And I'm actually going to go tape one today uh, on my phone later. But what I try to do is either go to a fifty five plus community, or I try to go to some kind of restaurant or a really neat place to go to. Mm-hmm. Like I did one at Ruth Eckerd Hall when we went to a concert. Um, just try to get people information in the area that they could use right. if they're thinking of moving what's here. Going on around right. right. Because they don't just want a home. They want to know, well, what, what's nearby? Yep. You know, what can I do for entertainment? Absolutely. Is there sporting events? You know, what, what is there out there? So I try to incorporate all that into it too. Well, this is the fastest 26 minutes. Really? We're, yeah, we're, done? we're down to oh about gosh. a minute and 10 seconds. Oh and my gosh. So um, now, we met through the Chamber of Commerce, mm-hmm. and then we got reconnected through RGA. Right, right. But it's not an RGA show. But it's saying, but you know, you do network heavy, and you yes. are really you are out there. Everybody that I know, and I say, oh yeah, whip. Oh yeah, I know Barbara. I know her really well. I'm like, okay, that's awesome. Well, that's good to know. Uh, Yeah, yeah, I've been getting out there uh, doing as many one-on-ones, what they call moms or one-on-ones, as much as I can too. And I'm finding that the networking has connected me to uh, the right resources. In fact, tomorrow morning, I'm going to um, a senior community that is an educational seminar that a uh, person through networking told me about that I should be involved in because I would meet a lot of people that might need help, you know, relocate to a 55 plus community That's that awesome. sort of thing so it does work it really does work very good so mm-hmm. everybody at home we appreciate you watching tonight we you know you know you could be watching other stuff but you're watching us and you're hanging in there with us we appreciate it. we'll see everybody next week on open for business